quick question for you before we get started today. What is your job title? We want to know. Let me know by leaving a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash experience action or drop a note in our contact form at experienceinvestigators.com. Thanks for your help. Now on with the show. Experience action. Let's stop just talking about customer experience, employee experience, and the experience of leaders. Let's turn ideas into action. Your host, Jeannie Walters, is an award-winning customer experience expert, international keynote speaker, and founder of Experience Investigators, a strategic consulting firm helping companies increase sales and customer retention through elevated customer experiences. Ready, set, action. Hello, hello. So good to have you here. It's another week. We have another great question, and I'm here to hopefully provide an answer. (laughs) So if you are new here, my name is Jeannie Walters. I am CEO of Experience Investigators, and I answer one question per week here on the Experience Action Podcast with the goal of giving you actionable outcomes, something you can do, some behavior you can adopt, something to measure, some way to actually take action on your customer experience and employee experience goals rather than just talking about it, even though we're talking about it here. Hmm. Anyway, we've got a great question today all about getting the job. Hey, Jeannie. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have any advice for a CX interview um, for somebody who might be starting a new role in CX? Is there any given time that you should wait before you start bringing up your own ideas? Um, Should you jump right in? Uh, That kind of thing. Thanks. All right. Fantastic question. And this is something that, you know, as customer experience professionals, it can be a little daunting out there, right? Because the job descriptions don't necessarily all add up. The roles and the titles and all of those things But your chance at making sure that the job that you want is actually the job that you want is in the interview process. So as you're approaching trying to get that job, the interview, I want you to think of it a little differently. I want you to think of the interview as a chance for you to see if they have the right expectations around customer experience. And I want you to think about the changes that you can make to improve not just the lives for customers, but also to deliver on those all important business results. So I'm gonna give you a few questions for you to ask during the interview process. So if you're ready and you're ready to be prepared for your next interview, sharpen your pencil, get ready, jot these down and think about what answers would be most meaningful to you. One of the first things to ask your potential employer is what does your customer experience look like today? Now I say this with a little asterisk on that because of course, before you walk in that room, before you have that Zoom or phone call with the recruiter, you wanna do a little research on your own. If you know what company you are actually interviewing for, because sometimes in today's world, we don't know that for a while, make sure that you've done a little research. What does their customer experience look like today? What is the news out there? What are the user reviews? All of those things. That will help you go in feeling very prepared. But then when you ask that question, what does your customer experience look like today? You're listening for a few specific things. Number one, pay attention to how they're defining customer experience. You wanna make sure that everyone in the organization is speaking the same language. If not, that is a red flag. We're gonna talk about that too. But listen to the words that the different people use, see if they're describing it the same way. Now, if they're not, that could be an opportunity for you. You could step in as a leader there and make that one of your first goals is to unify the definition of customer experience there. Another great question. What are the aspirations for the customer experience moving forward? This is where I want you to think of two sides of a coin. One is, are they realistic? Are they things that you can actually impact and make a change and not just talk about? Sometimes they say things like, we want our net promoter score to go up. Now, if they're in an industry where maybe it doesn't move all that much from one quarter to the next, and in your role, you might not have the authority or the accountability to make any of the changes possible 
to make that number move, then that's a really important thing to explore with them. You want to make sure that you're not put in a position where the expectations are unrealistic. Now, the other side of that coin is making sure that if they say something kind of vague or aspirational, that you ask the question, that sounds like a great aspiration. Would it be okay if we defined that further? So you're not saying no, you're not saying something doesn't sound great. You're just setting those realistic expectations in the best way possible. So you might hear something like, well, our goal is to uh, be friendly, right? We want to be the friendliest provider of veterinarian services in the world. I would ask the question, the follow-up question of, okay, that's fantastic. How are you measuring that today? And what are you doing about that today to improve friendliness? Now, that could be a big old meatball just to let hang out there because they might not have thought about this. But that's where you get to show your expertise and you can ask that follow-up question of, is that something I would be able to help define? By putting that out there, you're setting expectations that you want some control over these goals and that you want to be realistic, but you also are not afraid of big goals being aspirational. Another great question, what does success look like for this role? Now, I want you to think about a salesperson going in for an interview. Can you imagine if they said, we think you're great, we just want you to do sales? Now, of course not. Salespeople are very kind of famous for negotiating, right? They want to make sure that they're negotiating their commission structure and their base salary and their perks and all of that stuff. And the reason they do that is because they know that they're going to be held accountable to certain numbers. Now, if customer experience people go in for a role and are told, you're just supposed to do customer experience, lead customer experience efforts, deliver great customer experience. Those all sound great, but what does that actually mean and what does success look like? If your interviewer is struggling with answering, present your own definition of success. Be really clear about what outcomes are expected. And if they have a focus on one particular customer loyalty metric, ask that question of what sort of authority and accountability do you have to make changes to the experience on behalf of increasing that number? Don't fall into the trap of becoming a number narrator and being held accountable for moving metrics that you actually don't have the authority to change the behaviors, the actions, the processes behind. It can be very tricky here, but this is what I recommend. And then two more quick questions I would make sure you get answered in your interview. One is how is customer experience managed internally? This is where you're getting at governance. What's actually happening? For any customer experience program to succeed, the entire organization, not just the leadership team, must be committed and involved. And if there's no CX governance structure, then that's a red flag as well. And that's a follow-up question of, is that something I would be asked to lead or start? As governance is introduced, sometimes what happens is there's a committee over here and a committee over there and a team over there. So if that's the answer, then one of the questions to follow up with is, would I be able to unify and align those teams around common goals, outcomes, and measurements? This is where you want to get into developing a CX charter and things like that. By the way, we have a guidebook for you. We'll drop that into the show notes. And then finally, you want to ask what technology and tools are involved in the customer experience management here? What would I be expected to know and do? And where is the data? Where does the data live? You want to understand the platforms and the programs and the tools that they use. And then you also want to understand how do you access that all important data to gather those insights, to design those programs, to make sure that the people who are delivering for customers have the right data in the right moment for the right customer. You might not be able to control that. You might not be able to actually influence that, but you want to know that going in. What are the expectations around that? And then I like to ask a certain question that just gives you a little insight sometimes, which is, is there anything that prompted you to seek this role? And what I mean by that is sometimes the role is created from scratch. Sometimes they're replacing somebody, but something happened 
to cause them to be looking for a CX leader. You want to know what that is. It can set you up for success because then you understand what the expectations are. You understand how to define success and how to move forward. A few red flags to listen for in the interview. If you would be a team without any resources, if they're expecting one person to deliver for a team, you want to push back on those expectations. You want to make sure that there are defined outcomes and you understand what those are. Another red flag, there is a mindset that good customer experience just happens. This is when you hear things like, well, it's really important to all of us. We talk about it a lot. It's important to our leaders. And if you ask those specific questions about what are the outcomes, what does success look like? How are you governing this? If they have no answers to that, then you want to ask again, is it okay if I step into this role and help define not just the words, but also the behaviors, actions, processes, outcomes that we want as a business? Because what you're saying is I'm going to be in charge for real. (laughs) And that's a really important thing. And then if you hear them kind of refer to customer experience in interchangeable ways with voice of the customer, with net promoter score, with customer service, with the contact center, with CRM, those are red flags because what you want to say is, okay, it sounds like you're looking for a CRM director and that's fine. And that might be a great role. But you want to make sure you're defining things the right way. I often see in organizations where they say so-and-so is in charge of CX. And if you actually go talk to that person, they actually are implementing the customer relationship management software. That's not being in charge of CX, but they start using these phrases interchangeably and it gets very confusing and very muddied. So definition is your friend here. You want to ask a lot about definition You want to make sure your goals are defined and you want to make sure that you have that permission and respect before you even show up for this role. I believe that there are so many customer experience change agents out there just like you who are going to add so much value to their next organization. So go out there and interview with confidence because you've got this and it's an exciting time to be a CX leader. Now, I love these questions. I love interacting with you. I've been traveling a lot, speaking a lot, talking to many of you face to face, which is so fun. And if you haven't heard, we have released our wait list for CXI Flight School. This is a guided program around many of the tools and resources that we have, as well as just an overall way to approach leadership as a customer experience professional. If you're interested, check out cxiflightschool.com. As always, I'm so thrilled you're here with me. I cannot wait to hear your next question. And if you nail this interview and if you get that job, we want to hear about it. So leave me a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash experience action. Until next week, keep killing it. To learn more about our strategic approach to experience, check out free resources at experienceinvestigators.com, where you can sign up for our newsletter, our Year of CX program, and more. And please follow me, Jeannie Walters, on LinkedIn.